coming down here, thank you all of you for showing such interest. Also a special thanks to uh, Leicester Football Club for letting us use their facilities today. The reason we're here today is to tell you what Rendell's got planned for the future. And who'd have thought it was nine years ago when he first turned professional that we'd be doing something like this today. I'm sure a lot of you guess what we're going to say, but I'd just like to say Rendell's next contest is going to be on the 12th of never. Rendell has officially retired. You've seen him in the ring for the last time. But I've been privileged and very, very pleased and proud to be his manager for the last nine years. And my son, Jason, on the end there, he's been his trainer for the last nine years. So when I've finished rabbiting, Jason, I'm sure, is going to have a few words to say before we let Rendell have the floor. <laughs> Rendell's done everything that could have been asked of him in boxing. He turned professional. It wasn't a glittering amateur career. He did win the Midlands area title, but he didn't turn pro in a blaze of glory like some of the people that you see about. But he's gone on. He won the English Championship. He won the European Championship. Defended it five times. He won the Commonwealth Championship and he won the WBA International Championship. And it was never ever beaten for any of those titles. He gave, he gave them up voluntarily so that he could box in Tokyo for the WBC World Championship against one of the best men in the world without any doubt. And although he lost that contest, he came away with great credit. He lost narrowly on points. As I said, one of the best fighters in the world. As I say, Rendell, early on in his career, he stepped up a weight division to fight for the British title. Again, he lost a very close decision, but it set him on the path for what he's done since. And after that contest, he went for four and a half years until he went to Japan before he lost another contest. So I'm both pleased, proud, sad, whatever it is, to tell you that Rendell ain't going to be boxing again. But, I'd just like to say, Reynolds, thanks for what you've done for me. I'm pleased for you. My son Jason, who's trained Randall. I'd just like to say that it's been an absolute privilege to work with him. In nine years, I don't think I don't think we've ever had a crossword, have we? No. <laughs> ever. Never, ever, ever. I feel, you know, everything he's achieved, it's been fantastic. What he's done from where he's come from to where he is today is unbelievable. And Anybody out there, any, any kids out there, should be looking at Randall as, well, anybody, not just kids, should be looking at Randall as a great inspiration and what you can do if you, if you work, if you work and work and work and, and you've got a dream and you, you believe in that dream and you want to follow it, you've got to put everything into it and if you give anything 100%, that's where you can, that's where you can get. Yeah, he didn't win a world title, but he put, he put one of pound for pound, the world's best fighters, and he went to Japan, and like like we said, he performed with great credit. And maybe, maybe, you know, the road could have been a little different, and he could have won a world title, but he wouldn't have fought one of the pound for pound best. And at the end of the day, if you want to be world champion, you've got to beat the best. You don't want it giving you. And every 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 step of his way in his career, he's fought he's fought good fighters. And I always remember him when he came to the gym, his uncle Sticky Pratt, who brought him to us, who brought him to us in the first place. He said, I've got, I've got this kid, he's all right, he's strong, he's tough, he's all right. But I tell you what, when he came, he had his first fight, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> he was just trying to kill. And uh, it, was, it was funny, because he had, his first, he had his first fight when he made his debut. And he came back to the corner after the first round and he just sat there and we both just laughed. Yeah. But he kept telling everybody I'm going to be world champion. Oh, you then, so I'm Rendell, I'm going to be world champion. Next world champion. Everybody used to laugh at him. But all I can say is, what a fantastic career. I know what you've got, I know what you've done. And you've got to be proud of yourself. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, okay, I'm sure Rendell will like to say a few words. And then, if you like, we'll have questions from the floor. And after that, we can do some one to ones for you. Um, well, yeah, Dan's here. Um, it's hard. Yeah. 
I've enjoyed it, and like the fans around me have been great. Um, what more can I say? I didn't, I didn't ever think that it'd ever come to an end. Obviously, as everyone knows me, I train hard all the time. I like to do what I want to do. Um, I sit back character who has a laugh and a joke and obviously never take no serious. Obviously, apart from obviously boxing, should I say, that's the only thing I've ever really took. 100% serious in my time. Um, like Jay says, when I turned professional, obviously coming from the old Robin Hood, amateur boxing gym with my uncle Dave Sticky Pratt. It was, it was one of them. I never really looked at turning pro. Really, it was one of them that they kept on telling me. Obviously, my trainer as well, John White, kept on telling me, "Look, Randall, you're smart about it. You can, you can go places. You can do something." So they says, "Why don't you go pro?" So I was like. I don't know what do you reckon, and they both kept telling me, look, have a go, have a go. So I went up to the Shinfield gym, and obviously, like Jason says, the first training session there, I thought I'd bash his hands to bits. Obviously, as you do at that age, you think you're Tyson, and I think I smashed his hand for about two minutes, and then I said, go, go in the change room now, get a drink. Obviously, from there, I kept on carrying on, obviously, Jason and Mike says, oh, there's some potential there, but he needs a lot of work. But obviously as I am, I, I put the hard work in and obviously everything Jason asked me to do, I did. Obviously opportunities obviously came along, obviously fighting for the British title and obviously Jason said to me, look, this is your chance to, to make a statement for yourself. If you win, it's a bonus. If you lose and you've made a statement, it's still a bonus. So you go out there and do what you got to do. Obviously went out there and it was a good fight. And big thanks to Andy Morris really because that was the the start of big things really for me obviously we went back to the drawing board and obviously worked on a few things and come back again won an English title and then from then on pushed on forward and had a great a great career really did everything obviously I was asked to make won everything was to win and it comes down to to belts obviously like I say I won every belt there was apart from the world title but I went out there and basically put on a show still to this day I always say that I wasn't 100% in the ring but I did what the best I could do and my body could do at the time. Obviously, I wanted a rematch after that and obviously things didn't work the same. Obviously, that's why I think now I've decided it's time to call it a day because the opportunities I think I wanted have slowly whispered away. I think it's like, like I say, two years since Japan. And since Japan, I've not really had an opportunity to fight for another world title. So I think another thing I've always said to my family, to my friends, I'd never be a money fighter. And I think that if I'd have carried on boxing now, then obviously I'm just going to turn myself into a money fighter. I never wanted to do that. I wanted to be a fighter that won titles. And obviously the opportunity for me to win more titles is slowly withering away. So it's not, I can't see the, the, the fire for me anymore. So I think that's why it's time to, to call it a day, really. Obviously, all my friends, family know that I love training. I've still been in the gym since every day, every other day. But I've always said I ain't going to be one of them boxers that turn fat. So, obviously, my finishing coach, Harry Singh, still telling me the, the ish, the books, and what not to do and what to do. So, obviously, like I say, I'm just going to enjoy myself now and hopefully time to, for the first year, obviously, to enjoy the Christmas with my girlfriend, and show my kids, Tyler and Tyro, my first year. I've obviously, not have to tell Jason what I've had for dinner and what I've had for pudding. I think about getting all my kit together to go for a run after I've had my dinner, you know what I mean? So, it's time to enjoy it, you know what I mean? So. I think hopefully me for the new challenge now is I've always said I'm a good I could be a good mentor to kids and even adults out of there, you know what I mean, to show that hard work and dedication gets you places and obviously I'm sitting down obviously in the middle with Harry and, and um Neil as well at Lancaster School. Obviously talking about going into the school, doing like mentoring and things like that down at Lancaster. So obviously I think that's a new challenge for me now. Obviously everyone knows Rendell likes the challenge and I think I'm due for a new one, really. Okay, James. Thanks, Randall. Any questions on the floor? Randall, obviously, obviously emotional in the end, but was it a difficult decision? Um, very difficult. Very difficult. I think, like I say, I've been doing it for 16, 17 years, all the way through, enjoying it. Do you know what I mean? But then, obviously, sometimes you have to sit back and and say to yourself, look, I've got a family at home, I've got two kids, 
I, obviously, I always feel that my oldest son, obviously Tyler, was nearly 12. He's missed out on a lot of daddy time, really. And so, like I say, I think I've always said that with him, with him boxing, it's a bit of a selfish sport. Do you know what I mean? But I always looked at it was selfish for my own ways of wanting to become a world champion and forgetting about everybody else. But in the other way, on the financial side of things, it was going to make a better time for me and my family. And, and obviously, the opportunities for that now are. I saw it disappearing, obviously the candles going out, obviously I'm not getting them world title opportunities now, so I think now's the time to be the dad of the family. And, you know what I mean? I've always said for me, as everyone knows, obviously I came from the bottom of the ladder to the top with a full daytime job, so I ain't afraid to graft, so you know what I mean? Back to work, normal, normal man. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, what stands out as your highlight from your career? Um, I think what stands out for me is Basically telling everyone how good I was going to be and how good I am. Um, I think the opportunity to fight Kiko Martinez was, was the biggest standout for me, obviously. Like I say, nobody wanted to fight him. And then, obviously, I think at the time it was 21, knocked out 20. And obviously, when Mike came over to me and says, oh, I've got an opportunity here for you to fight for a uh, European title against Kiko Martinez. He's done this. I said, I ain't bothered what he's done. He ain't boxed Rendell Monroe yet. I said, I'll knock him out. So, obviously... Jason was obviously giving me the schooling of what to do and what not to do and obviously like I said I think that was the, the time when Brendan Monroe first hit the scene and obviously the boxing bin man thing obviously all the high visits there and obviously the fan base and, and for me the fan base was incredible you know what I mean like I say I've always said it's it, it's nice to hear the voices of people shouting your name but when you go out there and everyone's wearing high vis tops and you know that they're all out there for you do you know what I mean it's it's a bit of a immense thing and I'll let everyone into a secret today about the glasses everyone used to always say to me why do you wear glasses to the ring window and I used to say when you go out there and you see all the Ivy's best and everything it's like you need to shut your eyes and take a breath you know because it's overwhelming and I say, if you're meant to be going in the ring as an old man, as someone to go out there and do what you're doing, everyone will be looking at you and say, what's he closing his eyes for? So I used to wear the glasses, because when you used to come out and you used to feel overwhelmed, you used to shut your eyes and think, it's business time, Randall, it's time to go. got a huge allegiance to Leicester City as well. I assume that's why you've chosen the, the King Power. Oh, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Obviously, Leicester City Football Club have been looking after me for a while. Obviously, like I say, I get the opportunity to train with the lads when I want. Obviously, I'm being put on the Leicester City Football Legends list now. So, obviously, I get free tickets to come and watch all the games, which you can't grumble for now. And um, Mr. Alan Birch, big... Big man for me, I always say when there's always someone to look up to and always say someone to say a big thanks to, I think is the man for me really. I think everything down here obviously has gone through him. You know what I mean? Sometimes when he used to say, Oh, I feel like going to watch the football today, I used to give him a little text and any tickets for me, Birch. He used to text me back and say, No, oh, always Rendell, they're on the they're on the stand for you, go and collect them, son. So you know what I mean, a big thanks to him as well really, but not even just Leicester fans in general, I think fans all over the place, you know what I mean? I always remember when I was boxing Mel Johnson for the European title and I got some guys like sending me Facebook messages saying we're coming from the Isle of Man, you know what I mean, to come and watch you and, and, and other blokes saying, oh, we booked special flights from Spain to come over and watch you, you know what I mean? So the fan base for me has been incredible really and I think that's, what, that's what's kept me going as well, you know what I mean? The full support really from everyone. Is that it then, gents? Okay, Ren will do some one to ones if can you want I, um, to. Can I ask you a question, Mike? Certainly. Um, to the standard where Ren is, you know, how comes um, he pick up everything, but in fact they find it so hard to give him a return world title fight, or to give him a world title fight? Why is it? Because <clears throat> there's a lot of politics in boxing, Alan. And if you got someone as good as Randall, and you were the champion, would you pick Randall or the easier fella? You'd pick the easier fella. And while ever they can keep picking easier ones, 
then somebody who's boxed Nishioka. Don't forget, Nishioka, I think it was his previous five defences prior to Rendell, he'd knock them all out. First four rounds, it looked as though Rendell was going to stop him. But give him credit, he was good enough, he changed his game plan altogether, and he did win the fight. But Rendell came away with that great credit. Immediately afterwards, I asked them, his promoter, his manager, what about giving us a return back in England? They just laughed. Absolutely no chance would they get back in with Randall. Since then he's gone on, I think he had another two, two or three, and he stopped them as well. So, it's a silly thing to say, Randall's too good for his own good. Well, he's got to that level, getting the next breakthrough, people won't have it, because he's too dangerous. The reason why you ask the question, I understand that, and I knew that, but the public doesn't know that. Exactly, so now the, that's right. the public will get the answer. Yeah, it, so. boxing's not like football where you've got to fix your list, United have to play the lesser teams and whatever. Boxing, there's a lot of politics in boxing. And while ever a champion can pick easy defences, that's what he's going to do. It's unfortunate, but I'm also afraid another that's thing I need, I need to push the cross as well, because um, Leicester, um, Rendell is a Leicester born, Leicester, a Leicester grow and everything. Now, you never have a fight in Leicester because Leicester take down all the sports players and have nowhere, so you have to go all different places to that's, build up other, exactly other cities right. instead of build up his own city. Yeah. There's nowhere in Leicester to put on a show, which in at Leicester... The of, at the end of the day, though, he might, he might never have won a world title belt, but he knows very well and everybody knows very well he was a world champion in his own right. Yeah, we understand the, that. Whether you had a belt or not. So, simple. So I'd say big thanks to everyone for coming today and big thanks for the support of everyone as well, you know what I mean? It's been an incredible journey and I think I'm about to start a new a new fight at home with the missus and kids. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just reminding me there's two people. Jason and I have been 100% behind Rendell and supported him from the professional side of things. But there's a couple of people Leisha, his partner, and his dad, Alan. Without them, I don't think Randall could have done what he's done. Oh, so, big thanks to you two. Thank you. Okay, gents. Thank you very much once again for coming. <coughs>